Uh, hi, everybody. Um, this is Jean Ré, obviously. We are here to present you um, how to demystify the HR dashboard. So we said we're going to start at 12.02. It is 12.03. I think everybody uh, is in, and if anybody is coming in later, then it's okay. So we could start with the agenda, Amy. So today, this is what we're going to, to do and go over. So I'm going to present myself and my colleagues. Afterwards, uh, we're going to also present um, the company, which is Cara, and then the upcoming activities. Then we'll look at uh, the people analytics of it all, um, the different types of dashboards that we could look at, and then the four different steps that you should look at and you should go through when it comes to building your own uh, HR dashboards. And afterwards, after those four steps, we're also going to give you um, a few examples that we have so you could um, basically have an idea of um, what they should look like or how you should build it. And then um, we'll have a few minutes to have um, your questions. You can also ask your questions while uh, we're doing a webinar. We suggest you that you either type them up uh, in a chat or, um, you know, just wait until the end to uh, ask it to us uh, with your own voice. Um, so we're going to start by presenting uh, everybody. Um, I have to start with myself. I always tell them to at least give me last, but it never it never actually works. Um, so I am Jean Ré, uh, People Analytics Advisor. I graduate from uh, HEC Montréal. Um, People Analytics allow me to um, have my two uh, passions in life. So basically, um, cultures and uh, different peoples, I, I can uh, basically help them and understand them better. Um, I am also in charge of everything that is uh, client contact and success, uh, and I make sure that they understand everything about Cara when it comes to functionalities and uh, our solution. Next, we will have Amy, um, one of my favorite colleagues. Uh, <laughs> Super fun, uh, always great when it comes to people analytics. Andre as well, Andre as well. I, I have flowers <laughs> to give, it's one after another. <laughs> but yes, like I said, uh, Amy is very passionate when it comes to HR benchmarking, in charge of it, all uh, when it comes to Cara here. Uh, she also ensures that um, whatever type of people analytics project that you do have, we make sure that we always keep the focus on your talent, on your employees to make sure that everything uh, not only goes smoothly, but uh, helps them have a better uh, experience when it comes to um, their work life. And last but not least, well, she is my favorite. Andre Lafonge is my favorite. Not only we, we have, because we have the same name, so sometimes we do get confused <laughs> in different meetings, but um, Andre is very passionate when it comes to uh, business, people, uh, intelligence and analytics, human capital. Uh, we say passionate because uh, she's been, um, as we say, uh, in the game for a while. So even before everybody was starting to um, use people analytics and uh, the data, she was uh, a pioneer and trying to move uh, everybody forward um, when it comes to people intelligence and analytics. She has a mechanical engineer, bachelor's degree, an MBA from the University of Laval. Uh, she is involved in uh, various projects, uh, whether it's small, medium, and large enterprises. And uh, as you can see, not but not least, she's been named top 50 HR analytics influencer in the world. So, um, you know, a lot to like and a lot to learn from her. <laughs> following uh, following that, um, like I said, we're gonna, I was gonna present uh, the company itself. So Cara, we are powered by the people of Centel. Uh, what we do is basically training development, uh, looking at KPI selection, dashboard audits, um, you know, any kind of projects when it comes to benchmarking and our platform. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, companies and logos here. Those are uh, some of the companies and organizations that we've worked with and that we're currently working with. And Centel is basically 35 years of expertise uh, more than 300 projects. He, uh, it is a Canadian-based, but not only Canadian, uh, in Quebec-based uh, company uh, when it comes to business intelligence and analytics. And it goes, um, all the projects that we were talking about here, 
the more than 300 goes through different kind of industries and all different lines of businesses. So we have, uh, we are very well versed when it comes to different expertise and different businesses. And uh, that's why we are here to help you out uh, when it comes to your HR dashboards today. So I will leave it to uh, Amy afterwards, but before that, uh, we have the upcoming activities. So um, obviously today uh, we'll do the webinar afterwards. You will receive a survey uh, within uh, the next few hours. And then if you miss out on something while we're talking, don't worry about it. We're gonna send you not only the presentation, but the link to the webinar. So that way, if you wanna listen to it again, or if you wanna take some more notes, you'll receive it. Um, all of the documentation next week. Uh, after that, we have um, where we're going to present in uh, La Semaine Numérique on uh, April 11th. So if you want to come uh, see us, it's in Quebec. You can come say hi and uh, learn and just chit chat because we, we don't have time to actually talk a lot here. And then afterwards, we have uh, another activity, which is Riding the Digital Wave, uh, which will uh, be on May 1st. And uh, that we'll be able to uh, basically register yourself afterwards. So now I leave it to Amy to uh, start it up. Well, thank you, Jean André, for this introduction and telling me I'm one of your favorite colleagues. <laughs> Which <laughs> That's is really truth. nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, before we get to the HR dashboard, uh, I would like to take a quick step into uh, people analytics because, as you know, uh, dashboards are just a part of the people analytics continuum. So here it is. So if you already came to one of our webinar, uh, if you already saw a, a training, if you read our blog, you probably already saw this picture. Um, but I think it is important uh, to take a look on the people analytics because if you want to talk about HR dashboard, it's a part of it. <laughs> so at Terra, we define people analytics as the process of making optimal, uh, realistic decision based on data. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot do this in one day, okay? You cannot wake up one morning and say, okay, today we will use people analytics, we will use predictive analytics. That doesn't work that way, okay? You will have to go through a long process to get there. And here are the main steps. So first one, you got the intuition. So here you believe you have a problem, so you built an initiative to address it, okay? The second one is the matrix ratio. So here are the indicators. So here I start measuring uh, measuring sorry, certain situations such as the turnover rate or my recruitment. That's the kind of stuff I would measure. And then the third one is benchmarking. So here I want to compare myself, okay? Compare my results to make sure that I don't have any problems, okay? And then we have the dashboard. So here, we're gonna stop here today, okay? Dashboard, here I put the important indicators for my organization on a dashboard. So I, uh, as I always say, um, a dashboard needs to be alive. So it means that it has to evolve over time and we must update it at least every quarter, uh, every year at least, <laughs> okay? And then you have surveys. So here you ask your employees for their opinion. So you will get information from engagement surveys, team interview, exit interview, and so on. Then there is what we call the people analytics wall. Okay, to get past this wall, you cannot do it uh, with Excel or HRIS. Okay, you really need to be structured uh, with a team, a technology, a budget. Yeah, you will need time, money, technology, and people to get there. So then you will be able to establish correlations. So correlation is a statistical concept widely used to assess the relationship uh, between two indicators. So the two indicators uh, will evolve simultaneously uh, with one uh, without one directly influencing the others. So for example, you've got the mobilization rate and the turnover rate. They often evolve at the same time. So when the mobilization rate is low, the turnover rate is generally high. So these indicators evolve together, but you cannot say that one directly influences the other, okay? And then uh, you will determine uh, causal links between indicators. So causality is when one indicator 
directly influence the results of another. For example, here you got the turnover rate and the turnover uh, the turnover cost. So if your turnover rate is high, then unfortunately your turnover cost is going to be high as well. This is inevitable, okay? And then you will be able to do some predictions. So who's at risk to leave your organization? Who is at risk of uh, long-term absenteeism? That kind of stuff. And finally, you've got the prescriptive, okay? And now you can, uh, this is what you should do to mitigate the impact of the prediction you have made, okay? And here, past the people analytics wall, we are in what we call that Yara, the why, okay? And before discussing the different types of dashboards, uh, I believe it is important to determine the criteria that defines uh, the quality. So. How do you define that a dashboard is good? Okay, as we often say at CARA, the chosen indicator must be important to your organization. So when it comes to the selection, it is very easy to get carried away by new trends and new indicators. So, however, I think it is essential to ensure that your indicators are relevant to your organization. Okay, your matrix must be aligned to your uh, organizational strategy so you can demonstrate that you are contributing to the achievement of your objectives. And then an essential element of an effective dashboard is the quality of your data. Okay, your data is the basis of your indicators and analysis. So I'm sorry to tell you this, but if your data is not clean, then what comes out of it, that won't be good either, okay? And finally, the last point of a good HR dashboard is the comparability. So if you analyze your results and present them to your C-level, upper level, um, you will very quickly be asked uh, the question, well, is it any good? So it is important to have and to know the answer. So it is important for you to be able to compare yourself with organizations uh, of your size, uh, your location, and uh, all of uh, your business field also. So you, if you cannot compare yourself with other organizations, so Compare yourself with yourself. That's the best way to do it. So compare yourself over the years. Uh, compare your departments uh, with each other. So that's a good way to know if your results are getting bad over the years. And now reporting domains. So you probably know that already. If <laughs> Specifically, if you went to, you've been to our webinar, but there are over 500 human resources indicators. So those are divided into different reporting domain, and here they are. So we would like to present them to you today. <laughs> Don't worry, uh, we will not go through the whole list, but here are some domains your HR department will be able to analyze. Okay, so you can analyze your structure, uh, your working time, so absenteeism, overtime, uh, your HR cost, your succession planning, your recruitment, and so on. Okay, and the domain you will analyze will depend on your organizational strategies and objectives. So, for example, if you have a flexible schedule, in your organization. Analyzing absenteeism will certainly not be a priority for you, okay? Even if it's a good reporting domain. And now, the reason why you are here, so the different types of HR dashboards. So here's the first type, the operational dashboard. Uh, the operational dashboard is a tool that will help you measure the progress of your activities and processes managed by your HR department, okay? Uh, there are many different types of operational dashboards. So you can have uh, the recruitment dashboard. You can also have the compensation dashboard. You also have the training dashboard, the performance management dashboard. And each operational dashboard contains between 15 and 20 performance indicators with the possibility of drilling down in the information, okay? And they also contain uh, two types of matrix. So you have the HR activity indicators to help you measure the HR department's uh, consumption of resources in terms of time and money. Okay, so here's an example. You have the number of training hours per employee. And you also have the HR activity output indicators to measure the results of your HR activities. So for now, uh, for example, you have the number of positions uh, filled by your team. That's a good one. If you want your uh, operational dashboards to be a, 
a decision making, a, dis a decision supporting tool, uh, rather than a table filled with useless data, you will need to stick to the essential. Okay, and here's uh, some stuff that you should be able to do with your operational dashboard. So your operational dashboard should help you monitor the progress of your HR activities. Okay, they should help you uh, identify potential solutions to improve your efficiency and effectiveness of your HR processes. They should also help you demonstrate that your are uh, that your actions are bearing fruit. Okay, that you are doing a great job. Well, in fact. And now it is important to remember that operational dashboards uh, are just used by your HR department. Okay, they are here to help you do your job and guide you, uh, guide you in decision making. They should not be presented to your upper management. Okay. Uh, the second type uh, of dashboard is the results dashboard. Uh, that one will measure the effectiveness of the human resources function. Okay, the purpose of the result dashboard is to measure the achievement of the HR department objectives. Okay, they track uh, employee attitude and behaviors. And here again, there are three types of results dashboard. So you have a few of them. So you got the headcount dashboard to track the evolution of talent. Uh, you got the attitude dashboard for detecting uh, changes in employee opinions. And you also have the behavioral uh, dashboard to measure the behaviors of your talent. So here is such as the absenteeism or your turnover. Uh, there are uh, between six and eight uh, KPI on these dashboards. And here are a few KPIs you can have on it. You can have uh, the turnover rate, the absenteeism rate, you've got the mobilization rate, and you can also have the number of sick days per employee, for example. Okay. And like the operational dashboards, uh, results dashboards are generally used by the human, res human resources department only. And the last but not the least, it is the strategic HR dashboard. So this one is directly aligned uh, with your organization's strategic objectives. Uh, and it it links uh, the HR performance indicator to the other uh, to other management indicators. Sorry. So it helps HR management and senior executive uh, to make optimal decision related to their talent. So here, the strategic dashboard has between three and eight uh, KPIs on it, um, which measure the effectiveness of uh, human resources and demonstrate that your HR results are directly linked to your organization's financial results. Okay, they are chosen. Uh, well, the KPIs are chosen accordingly to the company's strategy and objectives. So, here it is recommended to present only a few KPIs. Okay, just three to eight like I said, so you can remain uh, focused on what is really important for your organization, okay? And then here I stop presenting and I let my colleague on the show what she can do. Your micro is off. We cannot hear you. Doesn't work. <laughs> no, we can't hear you. Now, if you speak, maybe. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There you go. Sorry about that. You see my screen? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. OK. So hello, everybody. Uh, I'm really, really happy to be here with you this morning. Well, this morning. Thank you, Amy, uh, for your great introduction to the topic of HR Dashboard. In this part, we will be discussing the four essential steps for creating an effective HR Dashboard. So let's dive right in. Okay. So at CARA, we have this easy methodology to help you build your dashboard in four steps. The first steps and per perhaps most crucial step in creating your dashboard is to establish clear and specific HR objective. Like Amy said, these objectives should align closely with your company's overall goals and, and strategy. 
So if you don't have well-defined objective, it will become very challenging to you to identify the key matrix that truly matter for your organization. So take the time to evaluate your company's needs, priorities, and long-term vision before moving on to the next steps. The second steps, uh, so when, once you have established your uh, HR objective, the next step is to select the indicator that will help you measure progress toward those objectives. So these indicators that you'll be chosen should directly reflect the goals you've set in the first step. They could include matrix related to employee turnover, engagement, productivity, diversity, or any other aspects relevant to your HR strategy. Remember, the key here is relevance. If an indicator doesn't contribute to your objective, it's better left out. The third step uh, is when you have your objective and indicator in place, it's now time to start tracking and analyzing the data. This involves collecting relevant information regularly and using analytic tools to gain insight into trends, pattern, and potential area for improvement. So you need to monitor this indicator because it will allow you to assess the effectiveness of your HR initiative and make informed decisions about where to focus your efforts. And finally, the last steps, it's to have effective communication and action. Um, so you need to communicate uh, and take action because if you don't communicate your dashboard and if it, 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 it doesn't bring any ac action, the, the dashboard doesn't serve any purpose. So you need to share your finding with key stakeholders such as senior leaders or department heads to ensure alignment and accountability. You use the insight gains from your dashboard to identify opportunities for improvement. Remember, the goal of an HR dashboard is not just to collect data and present KPI, but to leverage it to drive meaningful action and impact within your company. It needs to help you make better decisions. So it's important to emphasize the, the, that aligning HR strategic objective with the company's overall business strategy is crucial for success. I will illustrate this point using two examples, one related to workplace health and safety and the other related to employer branding. I'll provide more detailed explanation. I'll go fast here. Okay, so I'll provide more detail and um, explanation on the second corporate strategy here. Um, because we don't have that much time this afternoon. So uh, you'll, be, you'll be able to review the health and safety uh, in more detail when you'll receive the PowerPoint presentation next week. So if your company's strategic objective is to be an attractive and innovative employer and for offering stimulating career path, the HR strategy derived from this could be um, to establish uh, a strong employer brand. Therefore, the HR team has identified uh, two talent priorities to focus on, which includes assessing and managing the candidate experience and also as evaluating the employee experience. So HR indicator that will result from these priorities could be the number of visits to the career site, uh, the number of job applications received, the number of LinkedIn and Facebook subscribers, um, the engagement rates coming from your engagement survey, and also the retention rate of new employees. So those, this is an example on how you could come from the corporate strategy, the HR strategy and objective, and then go to the uh, EPI. 
So start by clearly define and prior to prioritize prioritizing. Oh my prioritizing. God. Thank you, Tandri. Prioritizing business or HR objective and then assess the availability of relevant data. Don't start with the data. We've seen that in our customers. Sometimes they say, oh, we have all those data. Let's build KPI. That's not the good way to do it. You have to start with the objectives and then you'll go see your data. OK, so now let's go, let's talk about the second step. Indicator selection. Um, don't forget that indicators are not static. Okay, they evolve over time depending on changing business needs and priorities. You should have regular reviews and updates of your dashboard and your and the, the, the selected indicator. You need to look at factors such as shift in company strategies or priorities change in market condition, even technological advancement impacting HR process and outcomes. So indicator selection is not a one-time task. Sorry for that. Okay. It requires ongoing evaluation and adjustment to remain relevant and impactful. By the past, we would tell our customer to, to uh, look at their uh, KPI selection, every two, three years. Now, with the speed of change uh, we see uh, in the business, you need to review uh, your indicator at least once a year. So, like Amy said, uh, there are over 500 human resource indicators to help you measure your performance from recruitment to turnover, engagement, or demographics. So when it comes to developing your HR dashboard, we, rec we recommend to follow the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your indicators should be standard indicator and 20% of customized indicator. So what is a standard indicator? I'll give you an example. The voluntary turnover rate is a standard indicator. Why? because we should all use the formula recommended by the best practices and by the ISO 3414 standard. There is a standard formula for the voluntary turnover. On the other end, the quality of hire index, for example, is an indicator you could customize for your own need. It should reflect your reality. This indicator could combine different var variables such as uh, new employee retention rate, new employee performance, or even new, uh, new employee satisfaction with their new job. And you, can, you could add more variable if you want. So this is why it's a customized um, indicator and usually it's really difficult to uh, benchmark those customized indicators. Um, a question we are frequently frequently asked is how many HR indicators we should monitor. Amy uh, just told you uh, told you that. Uh, but for the strategic dashboard, okay, we say usually, Amy said between three and eight indicator. However, uh, it will depend on the number of strategic uh, objective you have. So usually the average uh, strategic objective is less than five, okay, in company we've seen. So for each strategic objective, it's always uh, important to have two or three indicators that that follows that objective, but that's th that does not that that doesn't mean that you need those two three indicators on the strategic dashboard. Okay, you could probably uh, put them on another dashboard that you keep for HR. So. The total number of HR indicator on a strategic dashboard shouldn't be more than 15 indicators, okay? Um, we've seen dashboard, strategic dashboard with 
more than 50 indicators. That doesn't make sense. Okay, the human, the human brain is not is not able to uh, to look at all those 50 indicators. Okay, so you should start smaller, much more smaller. Uh, in the last slide, I've talked about uh, the ISO uh, 34414 standards. Uh, this is a fairly new standard called Human Resource Management Guidelines for Human Capital Reporting. Uh, it is a globally recognized standard published in 2019. Even if it was um, approved in 2018, it was approved at the end of the year of 2018, but uh, it was really published in 2019. So this uh, standard provides guidelines for measuring and reporting human capital, including a comprehensive set of HR performance indicators. The standard outlines around 60 key HR performance indicators covering various aspects of human capital management. So access to a standardized set of HR performance indicator ensure that you have consistency and comparability across organizations and industries. So uh, just to mention that the indicators that we have in CARA are based on this standard. So you can obtain the standard by purchasing it uh, from authorized sources, such as national standard bodies, but you can also uh, uh, buy it on the ISO uh, official website. And it comes in French and in English, just to know, just to let you know. So in summary, for KPI selection, you, mu you must identify a strategic objective or key issue within your company. Then, you must determine the HR objective directly related to this objective or issue. Then you identify the current in HR initiative in place to achieve these objectives or address these issues. And finally, based on the existing initiative, select indicator that effectively measure progress toward the identified objective or resolution of the identified issues. If you follow this systematic approach, approach, you can ensure that the chosen indicator are directly aligned with the needs and priorities of your company, facilitating accurate assessment and strategic decision making in HR management. Now, uh, let's look at the third step. Okay, the third step in dashboard creation is to track and analyze the indicators. This stage, like the other one, is also crucial, okay, as it lays the foundation for actionable insights. Analyzing the indicator we publish is essential, and this is where we see sometimes in our customer, they, publish, they lack uh, expertise in analyzing the indicator. So they publish indicator, but they have problem in analyzing it. So analyzing the indicator, um, will help you um, provide informed decision making and strategic action. So you should be building robust analytical capabilities and skills alongside dashboard development. OK. Um, and adequate training and resource should be allocated to ensure effective tracking and analysis and analysis of HR indicator. So data serve as the cornerstone of effective dashboard. Like Amy said, no data, no dashboard, okay? Garbage in, garbage out. So at the beginning of your dashboard creation process, you will invest significant time and effort in managing data, including integration, governance, quality, historical tracking, and security measures. So you will need to allocate resource, meaning people, money, and time for the data part of your project. Don't forget that at the beginning, 80% of your time will be in the data. Just to help you with the data, here's some key question you should be asking. Who is the owner of the required data and who has access to it? For example, make sure that human resource has access to payroll data. 
okay? Because a lot of the data at the beginning will be coming from payroll. So I've seen some organization where HR didn't have access to payroll data. So it can raise significant challenges. Um, you will also need to assess the validity, reliability, and cleanliness of the data. Are the data, there are your data accurate, consistent, and free from error or inconsistencies? You will also need to evaluate the format and accessibility of the data. Are the data easily extractable from their from your system and available in a usable format okay so when you buy a new system the new the newer system usually have the possibility to extract the data easily but it should be a requirement when you buy a new hr system make sure that you are able to extract the data from it so don't forget to identify all current sources of HR data within your, your company. Data may be kept in various system and platform across the employee life cycle. Here are, here are some examples of HR data source. The payroll system, HRIS, ATS, learning management system, performance management system, succession planning system, and even the psychometric assessment tools. You have HR data in there, and maybe it's interesting to look at that data. I'm just uh, telling you. So you should conduct a thorough analysis and inventory of your HR data source in your company. Um, you need to understand where the data is okay uh, it will help you after to build uh, build your dashboard now let's see what technology could help you within with your dashboard creation on the left corner um, we have excel spreadsheet so excel is ideal for starting with a few indicator especially for small scale operation if you have 10, 20 employees, Excel is the best tool to use for your dashboard, okay? However, don't forget that it has limited scalability and prone to error due to the manual process. It is not recommended for larger organization. So for organization with more than 200 employees, I would not use Excel to do my HR dashboard, okay? At the top left corner, you have a, a built-in HR information system dashboard. The newer system uh, usually have a dashboard a component. So typically it offers operational and standardized uh, indicator. However, you will have a lack of transparency in calculation formula and customization option. HRIS, and other HR system are unsuitable for advanced analytics due to their limitation in data access and flexibility. So for beginning, yes, it's good to look at the dashboard that your solution, your HRIS provide, but you will get, uh, you will, uh, you will fast rapidly. You will rapidly get to the limit of it. So on the right lower corner, you have the BI solution, the business intelligence solution. For this, you need to develop a data warehouse or a data lake for HR data storage. And then you will use visualization tool like Power BI or Tableau for dashboard creation. I simplify that because it's a, a little bit more complicated than that, but you know, you need a data storage and you need tool to, uh, to put on top of it. Um, this solution requires expertise in IT, okay, and significant investment in development and implementation. However, it will offer robust analytics capabilities, but may be complex and time consuming to deploy. Okay. And finally, at the top right corner, uh, you have the people analytics solution. By the way, if you didn't know, it, it's what we do at CARA. Uh, 
It is a dedicated analytic solution designed by HR domain experts. So it offers a rapid implementation and lower cost compared to BI solution. It incorporates best practices and evolving AI functionalities. It is also flexible and user-friendly dashboard tailored for HR and management use. Now, after selecting, tracking, and analyzing indicator, the final step is to communicate findings and take action. The effective use of a dashboard goes beyond presenting indicators. It involves making informed decisions based on insights. It helps you provide actionable recommendations to drive organizational improvement and achieve strategic objectives. It will help you foster a culture of data driven data-driven decision-making and accountability within and outside the organization. So now let's see how to communi communicate your indicator. First, you, ask to, you have to ask yourself whom, to whom am I going to send, send this, uh, this dashboard? So you need to determine the stakeholders or audience who will receive the dashboard. You should, you should take into consideration the information needs and interest of different stakeholders, such as executive, manager, HR teams, and department heads. So you have different audience, you should have different dashboard. Second, when, okay? You need to decide how often the dashboard should be communicated. Note that frequency may vary on the nature of the indicator. For example, if you have a dashboard on your engagement and you only have a, uh, an annual survey, it doesn't make a sense to update that dashboard every month, okay? So it depends on the nature of the indicators. The frequency also of the data, the data and the needs of the audience uh, will help you choose the right frequency. So you should consider options uh, such as quarterly. I would say quarterly for uh, upper management is probably the best frequency and maybe um, monthly for your HR department. But you could also, if you have the right technology, uh, be on a real-time update, okay? Finally, third, <laughs> how? You need to evaluate different communication method for deliver delivering your dashboard, okay? And that, we have realized that uh, in CARA, uh, we thought that all the people should come in the platform and look at the dashboard in real time, but that's that that doesn't work that way. You still have population in your organization that will that will need the traditional methods, such as the PDF reports or the PowerPoint presentation, which may be easily printable, <laughs> but lack interactivity. But you should think about that, okay? You should consider providing online access to the dashboard for real-time updates for the population that are able to, uh, to do that, okay? And needs to do that. In a nutshell, you will need to tailor your communication approach. Customize your communication approach based on audience preference and technological capabilities. Ensure clarity, accessibility, and relevance of information presented. And strive to engage stakeholders and encourage active participation in data-driven decision-making. So now, um, before going into... Uh, the, the the specific dashboard, the example of dashboard that I want to show you this morning, uh, I will give you some tips for effective visualization. So first, keep it simple. Use easy to understand graphs and eliminate unnecessary axes, labels, and line. Simplify visuals to enhance clarity and comprehension. 
if you need to explain the graph you're showing, it means that it's too complicated. So simplicity, please. Two, maintain consistency. Use consistent color palettes fonts, including, including size and color, and formatting across visualization. So in your organization, if greens mean good, it should mean good everywhere, okay, in your dashboard uh, and your different dashboard. Consistency promote co coherence and enhance the overall aesthetic appeal. Also create visual hierarchy. What it means is, is you need to prioritize, prioritize this word again, prioritize important information to stand out visually. Employ visual cues such as size, color, and placement to guide attention to key matrix. You need also to limit, limit the scope. Avoid information overload by limiting the amount of data displayed. Focus on essential matrix and avoid clutter to maintain clarity. Follow also the natural eye movement. Arrange an element uh, in a logical order following the, the natural eye movement pattern. You know, when we read it's top left and it's from left to right and top to bottom. So your dashboard should be, uh, should be, um, build this way. Uh, strive also for balance. Ensure visual balance across the dashboard. You should usually utilize all the space efficiently. Uh, you don't, I don't like that when I see a dashboard with a hole in the middle, so you should balance everything. And also minimize scrolling, okay? So minimize or eliminate scrolling to ensure that the dashboard fits on a single page. Why? Because it needs to be easy uh, to print, okay? Uh, and finally, highlight the key performance indicator. Place important KPI at the top of your dashboard in large font size, okay? Uh, it'll put, you'll put an emphasis on those critical matrix. So that is it for the visualization. So now let's look at some example of dashboard. Okay, those dash dashboard uh, are built into uh, our platform, Kara. So here is a dashboard that is not really strategic, but sometimes really important, and it doesn't have to be uh, updated uh, every uh, every month, okay? But but maybe for the account, but other um, other uh, KPI won't. Uh, won't move as much. So here I have the ad count, the, the percentage of active employee, the percentage of permanent employee, uh, the percentage of full-time employee. So it gives you a it gives you a portrait of your uh, structure in the organization. It gives you a portrait of your demographic, the percentage of unionized employees, the percentage of women, the average age, the average tenure. So this is really related to demographic and structure. I've put some uh, graph here. One is a age pyramid, just to give you an example here of how, how our, um, our, um, our manpower is divided by uh, different um, different range of ages. And also you can see here, uh, just when one point of view that I have uh, more women, a lot of women which are 50 to 54 years old. Okay, so it gives you, uh, uh, it gives you a good portrait of your demographic in your organization, but it's not a really strategic uh, dashboard. Uh, this one, could be a dashboard for HR management, okay? So here you have uh, information on voluntary turnover rate, and it's bigger here because it's probably something that we want to put, uh, we have put uh, any initiative, HR initiative to uh, make this voluntary turnover rate 
move. Okay, so here we can see that all turnover rate is at 8.3, but the last at the last period it was at 7.3. So I have a little red arrow, a hop arrow that's it's telling me that it's not going really well. However, my objective for this uh, this uh, KPI is 10%. So I'm still in the range of my objective. So I, I'm okay. So you see, I have the headcount, the hire, the departures, the employee engagement. Uh, the one year turnover rate, the average time to fill and absenteeism. So you see, I have diverse uh, KPI from uh, diverse domain. Then uh, an executive dashboard and this one um, put a, a, a large emphasis on the cost, okay? Because we want to show that to executives. So here I have the headcount my active and inactive employee, uh, my percentage of women managers. So because probably in this organization, there's an initiative to bring more women uh, in the manager position. We have also the regrettable departure. So it's not the turnover here. It's a, a subset of the turnover. So here we just look at those departures that are regrettable for the organization. We have the total cost, work cost, the total absenteeism cost, overtime cost, and turnover cost. So this is this could this could be a, a good dashboard for executive. I have one here related only to turnover. So if turnover is a big issue in your organization, this could be a um, this could be a dashboard that you could be building. So my turnover rate, my voluntary turnover rate that I divide by my resignation rate, my retirement rate. Here we can see that retirement is not really an issue in this, this organization. The involuntary turnover rate and I have the cost related to turnover. So the average turnover cost. So it means that when somebody uh, leave the organization, how much does it cost in average and the total turnover cost. And and I'm looking at time. Oh, uh, we'll finish with this one. Uh, this one is more related to talent acquisition. So it's more related to our talent acquisition uh, team. So the number of requisition uh, for new position, replacement requisition, number of hire, external recruitment versus internal recruitment, refer recruitment, because we have probably put in place a, a referral program and the cost and, and we, We've put the cost per hire and the total recruitment cost because this is something we want to monitor in talent acquisition. So I'm gonna switch <laughs> switch now to Jean André because uh, I've talked too much already. <laughs> never too much, André. Never too much. Um, so uh, well, I hope you enjoyed uh, the presentation today. But uh, just a quick reminder of the upcoming activities. Um, so. After, um, well, in the afternoon, you will receive a survey uh, to tell us what you think about the webinar. Um, and the following week, you will receive the presentation um, when it comes to the PowerPoint, but also um, the recording of the webinar. So that way, if you missed out something and you wanted to look at it, you could always revisit it. Um, after that, on April 11th, like I said, um, you can come and say hi to us at the La Semaine Numérique. And then afterwards, on May 1st, we have our uh, next webinar, which will be uh, regarding writing the digital wave transformation, a guide for human resources. Um, so that is all uh, for today. You can always ask us questions right now, or if not, um, on the presentation as well, you'll have my uh, email address where you can also uh, send us your questions via email if that's your preferred choice. So no questions. My God. I may ask one. <laughs> <laughs> I always so when, have a question. Well, if I am a beginner, okay, with people analytics, uh, which dashboard should we implement first, according to you? 
<laughs> but well, I would start with an easy one like the demographics. OK, an easy one. At least it gives you the um, the opportunity to get the data, make sure the data is clean. So I would start with that. And at the beginning, you should start with within HR. You you should start by look at a dashboard and not publish it to other population in your organization. OK, make sure that you understand what you are building, what you're seeing, that you are able to analyze what you're seeing before um, sharing it with the, the rest of the company. So. No, no question. So, yeah, good. Not today, but not today. Uh, um, <laughs> but those steps are basically what um, you should do with every dashboard, Henri, isn't it? So uh, I don't know if you want to look at the demographics, and then after that, I don't know if you want to look at an executive dashboard. You should also make sure that, um, I don't know if it's HR, it stays within HR, and then you present it to your executive branch, so that way you make sure that the dashboard makes sense and all the everything is aligned to uh, the business strategy. So it's not only with... Um, I'm going to put it the demographics one, but it should be with every single dashboard that you do build. You just make sure that it goes from the team first, and then afterwards we expand it to the rest of the organization. Just yes. to be clear. <laughs> Good. Well, you're. Uh, who says thank you? Sorry, um, I switched it to um, my big screen. Uh, no, it just it just said it's thank you. <laughs> it just said thank you. <laughs> thank you. So thank you. Well, so thank you everybody for being here.